Chapter 251, Dismantle Time gradually passed until it turned nine. This was the time that tyrannical ambition had agreed upon for the second match. Yi Shu was sitting there and gaming in the smoking area as usual. Have you gathered all the materials yet? Yi Shu messaged Cold Knight. He was controlling Lord Grimm to head towards Bull's Town. Cold Knight almost replied with a, ready, when he suddenly realized, why was he acting so obediently? You hurry up, Cold Knight bluntly replied. At 9 o'clock sharp, Lord Grimm arrived at the arena entrance. He entered the arena, created a room, and then told Cold Knight which room he was in. After a brief moment, the other side entered. It was the same five characters from last time, but now, the players behind them were very different. The striker had become the leader. The cleric, next. And then the elementalist, blade master, and sharpshooter. Yi Shu smiled. The striker was undoubtedly Han Wenking. The cleric was obviously still Zhang Jinji. The elementalist, crowd lover, was probably Bai Yenfei, and the sharpshooter was probably Wang Qishan. How could Yi Shu not know who was in tyranny? Though, out of these five characters, there were only three pro players who were actually subbing in. Han Wenking's striker, Zhang Jinji's cleric, and Bai Yenfei's elementalist. Yi Shu had guessed these three correctly. However, the Blade Master and Sharpshooter weren't Tyranny's pro players. These two accounts weren't in Tyranny's area, so how did those players get them so quickly? Though, if they wanted to find other suitable accounts, it was possible, but Han Wenking believed that the three of them would be more than enough. The whole pro team? Do you want us to lose even more face? When Han Wenking said it, no one else dared to answer back. Right now, the three were in the studio. No one in the room dared to speak. Zhang Yu's, Endless Nights, and the Strikers' accounts were also being used. The other computers were being used by others, so they could only go spectate the match. What? What's the meaning of this? When Zhang Yu looked, he was immediately startled by the arrangement of Lord Grimm's team. The Blade Master, Flowing Tree? Not there. The Launcher, Cleansing Mist? Not there. The Battle Mage, Soft Mist? Not there. The Brawler, Steamed Bun Invasion? Not there. The Ghost Blade, One Inch Ash? Not there either. Not a single one of them was there. None of their classes matched the four other members in Lord Grimm's team and they didn't recognize any of their usernames. Zhang Yu turned around in astonishment and saw Han Wenking look at Zhang Jinji, where are the players you were talking about? The bet didn't require them to be here, Zhang Jinji said. Can we start? Lord Grimm asked. This guy, did he find another team of hidden experts again? Zhang Yu feared. He was absolutely confident in the pro team, but the problem was that only half of the team came. The sharpshooter and blade master weren't going to hold them back right? The sharpshooter and blade master were even more nervous than Zhang Yu was. The two were originally somewhat nervous when they heard that they were going to play with the gods. After seeing Lord Grimm's unexpected team arrangement, their hearts immediately tightened. Start, Han Wenking replied to Lord Grimm. Zhang Yu was too busy thinking. The screen he was looking at changed to spectator mode, and the match began. The random map that was chosen was the circular arena. It was a very simple and plain map. The map was a bit bigger than the 1v1's basic four-sided ring, it was round and flat. If this were a pro match, they most certainly wouldn't pick this type of map, where there was no advantage for either side. The map isn't bad, Han Wenking said. With such a simple map, there weren't any weird tricks or underhanded methods that could be used. Coordination and mechanics would be the only deciding factors for this match. You guys deal with those four. I'm going to meet with this Lord Grimm and teach him a lesson, Han Wenking simply ordered. Even though Zhang Jinji possessed the title of Master Tactician, it didn't mean he was always the shot caller during a match. The person who made the decision the most was still undoubtedly the team leader. Of course, Han Wenking and Zhang Jinji had very good synergy with one another. They would switch roles depending on the situation and help one another adjust. Two shot callers in a single team was usually taboo in team battles, but for Tyranny, their team was in extreme harmony. What happened if both their calls clashed? Up until now, such an occurrence had never occurred for them. 
After Han Wenking made the order, his striker quickly rushed forward. Arrow formation. Follow him, Zhang Jinji shouted and the four moved out. Arrow formation was a formation where one person led the way as the tip of the arrow. The remaining people would be on either the left or right and form a cone-shaped formation. It was very effective when charging in. However, the requirements needed for the person at the front was high. While charging, the person at the front would be the target of incoming attacks. Tyranny was very familiar with this type of formation, and Han Wenking was always at the front. They began with their most used strategy. The sharpshooter and the blade master felt their hearts surge. In game, they often copied this type of formation, but how could they have imagined they'd have the chance to do it with Han Wenking in the lead? The five maintained their formation and began observing their opponents. The other side was in complete chaos. Zhang Jinji had no idea what type of pathing they were taking. Zhang Jinji wasn't panicked. He immediately thought of the cheerleader from the previous match, zero kills. No way, right, Zhang Jinji was astonished. Lord Grimm had directly found four random strangers? He was being too confident, no? Or did he just directly give up on this match? However if that was his intent, then why'd he agree in the first place? Could he be? There was no time to think. The two sides clashed. In this type of simple map, the two sides didn't need to waste their time closing in on each other. The battle began after only 10 seconds. Han Wenking didn't care if the other side was weak or strong. He focused on his own movements. He always went all out. His right leg flew out, as he attacked with a high kick, launching the player in front of him into the air. His right hand whistled forward with a collapsing fist, blowing away players on either side of him, while sending an attack towards his target. The battle had only just begun, yet the other side had knocked back two players and knocked up another one. The spectators weren't sure if it was because Han Wenking was too good, or whether it was because the opponents were too bad. Han Wenking said he planned on encountering Lord Grimm and completely ignore the players he knocked aside. His character continued forward and welcomed Lord Grimm. Han Wenking attacked. He initiated with a dashing jab, which Lord Grimm leapt back to avoid. His striker immediately switched from a punch to a kick. His front kick seemed to have borrowed the momentum from the dashing jab and tore through the air ferociously towards Lord Grimm. A light cloud of smoke dispersed. The front kick had only connected with Lord Grimm's shadow clone. The spectating Zhang Yu almost shouted it out. He had seen the moment Lord Grimm had used his shadow clone technique and flashed behind the striker. Han Wenking's character passed through the light smoke and turned around. Lord Grimm's battle lance stabbed towards him like a viper. In this type of situation, being able to dodge this attack would make you feel lucky, but Han Wenking wasn't normal. He didn't dodge and instead, immediately stepped forward. He still planned on attacking. His two hands crossed and pushed forward to block the incoming lance. Level 30 Striker Dismantle Skill, Empty-Handed Blade Block. Dismantle skills were a type of special attack. The skill was split into two parts, using a parry against the opponent's attack, and then a counterattack. When the dismantle skill appeared, the block and counter were one. Once the player successfully blocked the opponent's attack, the following part of the dismantle would definitely hit. In other words, as long as the first part of the skill succeeded, then there was a 100% chance to interrupt the incoming attack and make a counterattack. However, using a dismantle skill wasn't that easy to activate successfully. First, the precondition was that the player had to block the attack, so the dismantle could only be used when the other player attacked. If the block failed, there would be no second activation of the dismantle. If the other side didn't move, your empty-handed strikes the blade would be wasted. Han Wenking wouldn't retreat and instead continued forward. He was planning on dismantling Lord Grimm and striking back with the greatest power he possessed. Chapter 252, Strike First Han Wenking's striker put both his hands together. At this moment, Lord Grimm's lance stabbed forward and there didn't seem to be enough time for him to draw it back. However, the lance suddenly swooshed and the umbrella canopy opened outwards. Lord Grimm tugged backwards and the front half of the lance was withdrawn this way. The striker's two hands connected with nothing but air. His empty-handed blade block had failed. 
Even an experienced expert like Han Wenking wasn't able to react in time to the Myriad Manifestation Umbrella's sudden transformation. The Myriad Manifestation Umbrella was lifted and the tip faced forward, exposing a black muzzle. A spark flew out and three anti-tank missiles flew out. Anti-tank missiles at this range would make most people feel hopeless, but Han Wenking was someone who didn't know the word hopeless. At this moment, his choice was the same as it was before, attack. As the gun fired the anti-tank missiles, his striker moved forward. Bang! The smoke and the fire from the explosions quickly dispersed, but Han Wenking's striker hadn't stopped or dodged. His striker tore through the smoke and continued to rush towards Lord Grimm. The three anti-tank missiles had been struck down by his punches. The anti-tank missiles' explosions should have caused a slight knockback and a brief stun effect. The reason Han Wenking's striker was able to continue pushing forward was because of a certain striker skill. Striker level 15 skill, reinforced iron bones. The skill lasted 20 seconds and during those 20 seconds, the character's physical defense would greatly increase and the character would enter a super-armored state. Correct, the super-armor state made the character immune to knockbacks and stuns. This was the reason why his striker wasn't affected by the anti-tank missile's crowd control effect. However, super-armor wasn't an invincible state. The increased physical defense would only reduce the damage slightly. Yet, even then, Han Wenking didn't hesitate to use reinforced iron bones. What he needed was not to retreat, but to advance forward. His tough attitude made Zhang Yu and the other spectators go into a frenzy. They had tried their hardest to resist shouting, but they were all hating how they couldn't fight alongside Han Wenking. They were filled with hope and hoped that his punch would teach Lord Grimm a lesson. In the end, Lord Grimm had anticipated Han Wenking's punch. When he used the anti-tank missiles, his character jumped slightly and flew back slightly, using the recoil to gain momentum. The striker's fists had missed. While the spectators sighed in regret, Han Wenking didn't seem to notice. His character continued to rush forward. It looked as if he wouldn't be able to catch up to the flying Lord Grimm, but then his hand suddenly shot forward and threw out a sand toss. Sand toss was a brawler skill. Both the brawler and the striker were of the fighter class. Any skill that was learned before changing classes could be kept. However, because the number of skill points was limited, players had no way of learning all the skills. Since they couldn't even max all of their own class's specialized skills, which skills, level 20 and below, to learn was under constant debate. Which ones to learn, which ones not to learn, and which level was good enough were all common issues. This striker had chosen to learn sand toss and for Lord Grimm, it wasn't going to be easy to dodge. The damage from this skill wasn't high, but the troublesome part was the bonus blind effect. Even though the opponent could turn his camera to avoid it, in a battle between experts, turning away for even a split second wasn't any different than a short blind. Yishu obviously didn't want to give Han Wenking this type of opportunity. His myriad manifestation umbrella opened up and the sand toss only hit his umbrella. When he looked again, Han Wenking's striker pushed his hands forward and a chi bullet flew out. Oh? Chi bullet was a chi master skill. Sand toss was probably learned because of its blind effect, but chi bullet was just a normal flying projectile. The damage itself wasn't bad, but the problem was that it did magic damage. Chi master is a class that mainly dealt magic damage, and since strikers relied on physical attacks, they couldn't use the skill to its full potential. Such an uncommon skill was completely out of Yishu's expectations. The Chi bullet was shot out quickly, but its movement speed wasn't too fast, so Yishu was able to dodge it, but the striker used this opportunity of time to close in and continued with his plan of taking the first strike. He initiated with a front kick, which Lord Grimm sidestepped to dodge, but unexpectedly, the striker immediately turned his hand over and followed up with a palm strike. Yishu hastily leapt backward and just barely dodged the palm. Slap was a low-level brawler skill and most other classes wouldn't choose to learn it, however, this striker did. The slap missed but the striker shot forward with a dashing jab, following closely behind Lord Grimm. Han Wenking deserved to be called a god. His kick, slap, and punch, three skills, were linked together perfectly without any pauses in between. Lord Grimm's movements weren't slow either. 
a normal step, a small hop backwards, and then a side roll. These were three movements done perfectly to avoid the three attacks. Zhang Yu and the other spectators stared at each other. It was becoming more and more evident just how skilled Lord Grimm was. Even though Lord Grimm was currently being pressed on by the god Han Wanking, he hadn't taken any significant damage yet. Speaking of this, how many players wouldn't feel pressed when fighting against Han Wanking? Han Wanking was an extremely aggressive player. Using reinforced iron bones to take the hit and continue forward was his style. Lord Grimm rolled back up but Han Wanking's striker had already closed the gap. Han Wanking jumped forward, just barely off the ground, and kicked. This was the striker's eagle stamp. The effect was similar to Huang Shaoshan's falling light blade. The two had both used their respective skills as soon as their characters left the ground to execute the skill extremely quickly. Lord Grimm had only just gotten up and was finally unable to dodge. The eagle stamp connected with his head and he was quickly kicked twice soon after. Eagle stamp's damage wasn't bad, but if the consecutive stamps weren't done quickly or accurately enough, the opponent could escape from it. Han Wanking obviously wouldn't make such a mistake. When Han Wanking or a god-level player did such actions, such difficult aerial maneuvers could be done perfectly. Han Wanking continued with his fierce attacks. As soon as his eagle stamp finished, he immediately used a collapsing fist since eagle stamp couldn't cause the opponent to become dizzy. As soon as Lord Grimm saw the fist fly towards him, his myriad manifestation umbrella immediately split into tonfas. His right hand shot out and reached out towards the striker's fist. The striker was grabbed, lifted onto Lord Grimm's shoulder, and then thrown backwards onto the ground. Grappler level 20 dismantle skill, receiving throw. Chapter 253, to retreat by advancing. Ah. This time, quite a few of the spectators shouted in astonishment. In their eyes, Han Wanking had been pressing forward extremely hard. It was already quite amazing that Lord Grimm was able to endure for so long. Finally, when Lord Grimm had been eagle stamped, they thought that victory was in hand. But just now, Han Wanking's striker was suddenly hit by the opponent's dismantle. The receive and throw's damage couldn't compare to eagle stamps, but receiving the opponent's attack and then throwing him onto the ground looked much more devastating than eagle stamps' movements. Lord Grimm didn't throw the striker out with his receive and throw. He instead kept the striker near, not allowing him time to quick recover. If I don't leave you with some black and blue to look at in the mirror then you'd be too arrogant, Yi Shu said after throwing Han Wanking onto the ground. So it really is you, Han Wanking replied. He wasn't surprised. As rivals, they were really too familiar each other. After fighting for a bit, Yi Shu was already completely certain that the striker was Han Wanking. And even though Yi Shu wasn't using his signature battle mage, his pathing, decision making, and other battle habits had already been seen through by Han Wanking, who was also certain that Lord Grimm was Yi Chu. Who? Who? Zhang Yu and the other spectators began muttering amongst each other. They couldn't hear the opponent's voice in-game, but they could hear what Han Wanking said because he was in the same room as them. Lord Grimm is someone their god recognizes? Zhang Yu and the other spectators trembled. Meanwhile, on the screen, Lord Grimm didn't follow up on the fallen striker and instead waited for Han Wanking's striker to get up. Are they not going to fight? The spectators were puzzled. From start to finish, they had been locked onto Han Wanking's and Lord Grimm's 1v1. And what about the other players? They hastily checked the rest of the fight, and they only had one thought in their hearts, disaster. An utter disaster. Lord Grimm's four teammates had been flattened so badly they probably didn't know which way north and west was anymore. The sharpshooter and blade master even looked powerful and mighty in front of them, which made Zhang Yu quite jealous. It wasn't hard to see that Lord Grimm's four teammates were the same as the previous zero kills. They were easily cleaned up. Who exactly is Lord Grimm? What is he trying to do? Zhang Yu wasn't able to understand. When they looked back, Han Wanking and Lord Grimm were once again fighting. But so what? Once those four cheerleaders died, they would just gang up on him. Why fight so seriously? Yi Shu chuckled. Han Wanking didn't reply and kept on attacking ferociously. After a few rounds, one of his strikes connected with Lord Grimm again. 
Zhang Yu and the other spectators' hearts had leapt into their throats. But in the end, Lord Grimm didn't counter and was then beaten up by the striker. Seeing Lord Grimm being beaten up so badly should have been something to celebrate. Zhang Yu didn't know why, but currently he didn't feel anything from it. Han Wenking comboed and then suddenly stopped midway. Lord Grimm's body fell. To everyone's surprise, he didn't even quick recover. He just lay there, not moving. It was strange that an expert like Lord Grimm wouldn't move. Was he already dead? But when they looked at his character's health, Lord Grimm was still far from dying. The spectators were bewildered. They stealthily glanced at Han Wenking and discovered that his face was like the calm before a storm. They held their breaths. The spectators were trying to figure out what was going on, when Lord Grimm finally jumped back up. Sorry, I had to leave for a sec. Huh, why aren't I dead yet, Yi Shu said. Han Wenking didn't say anything and then immediately pounced forward. He had felt it before, which is why he suddenly stopped. At this moment, the other eight players' battle had ended. How could some random players be an opponent for two pro players and two in-game elites? After the four cleaned up the cheerleaders, they rushed over and arrived at where the other two were dueling. But none of them moved to surround Lord Grimm. Should they move? Seeing that Zhang Jinji and Bai Yenfei weren't moving, the sharpshooter and the blade master did the same and just watched in silence. Since they were fighting next to their god, they weren't negligent in the slightest against the cheerleaders. They had been completely focused on their battles and hadn't been paying attention to the battle here. The two prepared to enter the battle at any moment, but it didn't seem like they needed to. Under Han Wenking's fierce attacks, Lord Grimm looked to be struggling to stand up. It didn't look like he had any chance of fighting back. That was to be expected. In front of Han Wenking, what was Lord Grimm, the sharpshooter and blade master thought simultaneously. But Zhang Yu and the other spectators didn't think like this. Their minds were still pondering over of that sudden receive and throw's speed and accuracy. Except, after that, Lord Grimm never really showed up again. He had been taking a beating the entire time. He even stopped moving for a bit. But after standing up, nothing changed. It was just a matter of time before Lord Grimm lost. But Zhang Yu still felt uneasy. He felt that the loss was too unusual. It seemed like he was losing on purpose. Right before Lord Grimm's health bar ran out, Han Wenking stopped his attack once again. What are you doing? Just a bit more. Hurry up, Yi Shu said. What are you trying to do? Han Wenking asked. Old friend Han, your attitude is certainly deserved. But it's just a small match. Of course I know that you always like to go all out, Yi Shu continued, it's just that, at our age, we should slow down a bit. You've probably felt it. Sorry, I only know how to go forward. I don't understand what, slow down, means, Han Wenking said. Then, hurry up, Yi Shu had Lord Grimm step forward into Han Wenking's attack range. If you've already recognized that you've lost, then leave the stage yourself, Han Wenking said. Leaving doesn't mean I recognize that I've lost, Yi Shu laughed. Lord Grimm left and the system proclaimed tyrannical ambitions team as the victor. Zhang Yu and the other spectators in the room as well as others who were watching in-game all felt a bit puzzled, but all in all, they won and their happiness instantly washed over their bit of doubt. Their biggest worry now was whether Lord Grimm would do as he said he would. You've lost, Cold Knight immediately messaged. Yeah, in the future, I won't touch your guild's records, Yi Shu replied. Ha ha ha, that's good. Then, we'll continue to be friends. If you ever need anything, then you can come talk to us, Cold Knight was incomparably happy. Yi Shu simply replied with a smiley face. What do you say we take Lion Canyon's record tonight, Cold Knight asked Zhang Yu. It's finally over, Zhang Yu let out a sigh of relief, if the other guilds want to compete with Lord Grimm, then let them. We've finished our matters. In the future, we'll keep good relations with Lord Grimm. This guy seems to have some sort of background. I'm going to ask the team captain about it in a bit. Okay, that's what I thought, too, Cold Knight said. Meanwhile, Yi Shu opened up his friends list and messaged someone. Are you interested in Line Canyon's record? Of course, but we can only rely on ourselves, God. We can't look to you for help anymore, Blue River replied. 
I know. I won't be moving. I have a guide with me here. Would you like to take a look? Chapter 254, by Proxy. Guide? What guide? Blue River was somewhat puzzled. A guide for setting the record. Yi Shu replied casually. The guide was based on Concealed Light's version. After a few days of hard work, Concealed Light finally finished an accurate guide for how to set the record. Yi Shu had checked it seriously and didn't find any problems with it. It could be said that if you followed the guide step by step with a team without any equipment issues, then anyone could participate in the competition for the dungeon record. Afterwards, it just depended on who carried the guide out the best. However, Concealed Light's guide wasn't anything out of the box. In other words, Concealed Light's guide was detailed and precise, but it wasn't anything new. It wasn't that Blue River and the other experienced players didn't understand the strategy the guide used. It was just that they hadn't played a low-level dungeon in a long time, so they were unfamiliar with it. Concealed Light's guide let them save time by researching the things they had forgotten or weren't used to, allowing them to directly practice with a complete strategy. But the guide Yi Shu presented wasn't the same as Concealed Light's guide. He had made a few revisions on Concealed Light's version. These revisions were new strategies that had never been talked about before in Line Canyon. They were similar to the new strategy Yi Shu had come up with for Boneyard. This type of new strategy wasn't something that Concealed Light, who didn't have any actual experience, could come up with. A guide for setting the record, Blue River was still suspicious. Correct. As long as you follow it, then I can guarantee that you guys will stand on top of the record boards, Yi Shu was very confident. Really? Then, let me study it, Blue River said. Bro, there's a tuition fee. Blue River stared blankly. In that instant, he understood what was going on. Thai's god had changed his approach. Currently, it was very difficult for him to continue substituting in and setting the record for the guild. This was because Lord Grimm was too good and was too famous. Whenever a record came out with his name, he would be the only person the players would see, and thus, no one would recognize that record as a reflection of the guild's strength. Looking for Lord Grimm to set the record for them wasn't a viable route anymore. But the guild still needed records and Lord Grimm had become a large obstacle for them, which was why seven guilds had allied together to chase down Lord Grimm. Blue River knew what had happened in the past few days. He was glad that Blue Brook Guild hadn't participated. God had made the seven guilds suffer miserably. However, Blue River understood that this god wouldn't relax. No matter how skilled he was, he was still only a single person and had to divide some of his attention to avoiding the guild's pursuit. The battle wasn't easy for either side. In Blue River's eyes, the battle would still be decided by the dungeon records. If this god was still able to continue forcefully pressing on the dungeon records even while being chased, then the guilds would be forced to compromise. It was very possible that they would eventually have to pay him to not set the record. Forcefully pressing down on the records wasn't a problem for this god. And dealing with the pursuers from the guilds didn't seem to be much of a problem for this god either. Using power to subdue the big guilds sounded ridiculous, but it was actually possible for him. That was what Blue River thought after knowing Lord Grimm's identity. As the guild leader in the new server, he understood the progress of each of the guilds. At this moment, the elite teams were about to reach level 34. Line Canyon's final record would be set tonight. And currently, it was very possible that the not yet level 33 Lord Grimm would level up later and then take down the record that would be set tonight. It was also possible that he would set another astonishing record right now at his current level. Blue River hadn't completely given up on setting new records. He had only given up on competing with this god. In other words, Blue River was prepared to pay him to not set new records. It was just that they had to take down the record first. And amidst this, the god came to him to try and sell him some guide. He deserved to be a god. His line of thinking was clear and he knew that the dungeon records were still the only solution to the current conflict. However, he hadn't thought of forcefully subduing the guilds with his records and had instead chosen a different method to help the guilds set the record. Lord Grimm didn't care about having his name on the records, but he needed the materials. 
As a result, he chose to sell his strategies. Too smart. Blue River couldn't help but praise him. By doing this, he would drop the guild's enmity while making a profit. His method was too beautiful. Blue River completely understood what this god was trying to do. He also knew that this god wasn't hiding anything from him. I understand, Blue River replied. Blue River didn't doubt the reliability of the guide. This was because he knew Lord Grimm's identity. It would be an easy task for God Yi Chu to make a guide. Before, everyone had been puzzled about how he had set those astonishing records. And now the answer was almost in front of them. Can I ask a question? Blue River suddenly asked. What question? Why did you choose Blue Brook Guild? Blue River asked. Choose? That's not right. I just picked a random guild to ask. If you don't want it, then I'll ask another one, Yi Shu replied. So it's like that. I do want it. Then let's discuss the price. But I can't take it this time, Blue River said again. Before this, we made an agreement with tyrannical ambition that they wouldn't touch Desolate Land's dungeon record, while we wouldn't touch Line Canyon's record. So it's like that. Then you've lost a good opportunity. I'm very sorry. Can I ask for the guide for the Fire Forest dungeon record in advance? Blue River asked. Hmm, let's talk about it later, Yi Shu replied. Blue River was sad. He was afraid of the words, let's talk about it later. Previously, when he was still looking for Lord Grimm to set the record for them, he had gotten, let's talk about it later, as replies. And every time, a different guild had taken the opportunity. If he knew that the situation would come to this, then he wouldn't have made the agreement with tyrannical ambition. What a pity, Yi Shu felt sorry for Blue River and then chose a different target on his friends list. These other guild leaders longed for the records. Sure enough, Yi Shu messaged Misty Castle's guild leader, who immediately replied back saying he was interested. Knowing that there would be a price, the guild leader sent an emoticon with its cheeks streaming with tears and then asked for the price. Yi Shu's asking price was very reasonable, so there was no haggling over the price. In any case, neither side would have budged. After just a few words, they finished discussing about the price. But because it was their first time collaborating, both sides needed to communicate a bit more. After all, this time, Yi Shu wasn't going to personally substitute in. If he was going to, then the record was guaranteed. As for buying the guide, Yi Shu could only guarantee that there weren't any problems with the guide, he couldn't guarantee that Misty Castle's players could completely follow the guide's requirements. This wasn't something he had control over. Misty Castle's guild leader wanted to pay the materials after they had successfully set the record. Yi Shu continued to say that there were absolutely no problems with the guide and he would receive the pay as soon as he gave them the guide. As for whether or not they could set the record, that depended on themselves. The two argued for a long time over this issue, yet no conclusion was made. Chapter 255, What Does He Gain? Misty Castle's guild leader was indecisive. After pondering over it for a while, he still hadn't come to a decision. Yi Shu could only patiently explain to him his guide. Before, when Yi Shu went to look for Blue Brook Guild, he had said that he just picked a random guild. In reality, that was a lie. Selling the guide was different from personally setting the record for the guild. No matter what guild it was, as long as he subbed in, Yi Shu would take down the record guaranteed. But the guide was different. The guide was only something on a piece of paper. Whether or not you could complete what was on the paper was a completely different matter. Why were most of the records held by the three great guilds? Strength. Even with the guide, the buyer still had to perform. Top-tier guilds undoubtedly had the advantage when it came to the number of talents they possessed. For example, the group of five that Zhang Yu lead had good mechanics and were outstanding in their ability to implement a guide. With Yi Shu's guide, they would certainly be able to set an incredible record. And what about the big guilds who had slightly fewer talents? They would be the same as Misty Castle. They would hesitate over whether they should buy the guide or not. Misty Castle's guild leader didn't doubt that the guide was real. He was just worried that their guild's players weren't talented enough. If their guild acquired the guide, but weren't able to take the record, then wouldn't that be like drawing water with a sieve? This was why he hoped that they could have the right to return the product. Even though Yi Shu refused it, Yi Shu understood what the other side was thinking. 
At this moment, if this was some other guild, then they would probably be the same. Misty Castle was already considered one of the stronger guilds. Don't worry about the guide. There aren't any complicated or unfamiliar maneuvers you have to do. If you find a few experts and practice, then there definitely won't be a problem. Yi Shu tried to ease Misty Castle's guild leader's anxiety. After another long pause, Misty Castle's guild leader reluctantly replied with an, All right then. Thus, Yi Shu immediately asked the other side for his email address and sent the revised version of Concealed Light's guide to him. Misty Castle's guild leader impatiently opened it. So long, he just saw the article's page length and was already astonished. He then checked the detailed directions for the final boss. He didn't see anything that was extremely difficult and it really was within their abilities. Only after checking this did he scroll up and take a look at the rest of the guide. Misty Castle's guild leader was an expert among the experienced players as well, so his vision was quite good. After quickly skimming through two pages, he didn't find anything wrong with it. I'm going to keep reading, Misty Castle's guild leader tabbed back to the game and called out to Lord Grimm. Take your time, Yi Shu wasn't worried. The guide didn't have any problems and Misty Castle was a guild backed by a club who valued their image greatly, so they definitely wouldn't go back on their word. Afterwards, Misty Castle's guild leader asked a few questions about parts he was uncertain about. Yi Shu explained each one to him. After a few rounds, he finished looking at the guide. Misty Castle's guild leader didn't find anything wrong with it, so he sent Yi Shu the materials. After the trade was finished, Yi Shu looked at the time. It was almost time to change shifts, so he logged out of the game. With a few minutes to spare, he randomly browsed around the internet. On the forums, Concealed Light had already posted his Line Canyon guide. It was even longer than the previous idiot's guides, making many intimidated with their first glance at it. However, the amount of mocking lessened and many began to seriously comment on it. Club Tyranny Han Wenking, Zhang Jinji, Bai Yenfei. After finishing their match in game, they didn't stay in their guild studio and went back to do their own business. Without a doubt, the match had been utterly boring. Zhang Jinji's and Bai Yenfei's fight against the four cheerleaders didn't need to be talked about. Even though Han Wenking fought against his old rival, Yi Chu hadn't been trying at all. If Yi Chu had only fought like this previously, then Han Wenking would have confirmed his status as fully retired. However, Yi Chu clearly proved himself with the dismantling throw, which Han Wenking was unable to defend against. Yi Chu just hadn't been taking it seriously. Why? Zhang Jinji didn't understand. Looking at his performance today, he was clearly planning on losing. He would never do something that had no purpose. This means that him losing was in his interests, Han Wenking said. That's why I say that he had already decided to lose this match long ago, Zhang Jinji said. If he loses, then he won't touch tyrannical ambition's records. But at the same time, tyrannical ambition won't make trouble for him, too. This might be what he wanted to achieve, Han Wenking said. What does he gain from this? Time, Han Wenking answered bluntly. Zhang Jinji stared blankly, though he sort of understood. You don't actually think that guy truly plans on retiring for good, do you? Han Wenking said, in maybe another year, we might meet him in an official match. Han Wenking suddenly lowered his head and looked at his right hand, which then clenched into a fist. When Han Wenking and the two other pro players left the studio, Zhang Yu mustered up his courage and asked who exactly Lord Grimm was. Yi Chu, Han Wenking threw down the name and left. Zhang Yu and everyone else in the room were obviously dumbstruck. The thought that Lord Grimm was such a person hadn't come across their minds before. But they didn't revere Yi Chu in any way. He was Tyranny's archenemy. Of course, they completely understood their archenemy's strength. After finally knowing who they had been up against, their hearts relaxed a little. Losing to a god wasn't shameful in any way. Plus, their team captain had helped take revenge for them. But because of this, they still had to change some of their plans. Zhang Yu contacted Cold Knight, maintain contact with Lord Grimm, but there's no need to rope him in. Why? Do you know who Lord Grimm is? After knowing that Lord Grimm was Yi Chu, Zhang Yu couldn't imagine what type of conditions he'd have to give to rope in such a god. Who? Cold Knight asked. 
Yi Chu, Zhang Yu bluntly replied like Han winking head. Saying the name in such a way was just as if he was the team captain. Zhang Yu wanted to copy him, but unfortunately, he could only type it out. He hoped that Cold Knight would be able to see some of his demeanor from these words. After a long while, Cold Knight finally replied with a single word, D asterisk Minnesota. That's why you don't need to bother with roping him in, Zhang Yu said. I understand, Cold Knight replied. Tonight we'll go just as planned. We'll take down Line Canyon and then go back. The rest is up to you, Zhang Yu made a great concluding speech. Don't worry, Cold Knight was full of confidence. Without Lord Grimm against them, he wasn't worried about anyone else. At midnight, Zhang Yu's group gathered together at Line Canyon and headed towards the dungeon. This was their last night in the tenth server. The five all felt a little nostalgic. Playing in the new server is quite fun, too, the Blade Master said. The new server is pretty crazy this time, the striker added. I'm currently wondering that when Yi Chu comes to the heavenly domain, what will happen then, the sharpshooter said. Everyone fell silent. In their end, they all exposed a somewhat pained expression. F asterisk CK. You just had to say that when we were all so happy. My bad. Okay, let's take down the record first. Let's take it down, Zhang Yu yelled. Understood. The four replied. Even though Yi Chu's shadow made them surprised, the five were in high spirits. After only one run, they broke the Line Canyon dungeon record.